Today I bought another $8,000 collection. What's up guys, we're back with another epic video and today we have another huge collection purchase, but first we do have a giveaway. I'll be giving away these two Ultra Rare Legacy of Darkness cards. All you have to do is like this video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, and let me know what you think about this collection. It's a lot different than our other $8,000 collection, but it's also really nice. First, we have a note from the seller. Hi Ruxin, humbled and honored to make it in at yet another video. He sold us a Soul of the Duelist Unlimited box, I believe, in the past. I've been around since the Tower of Terror <laughs> Enemy of Justice days. Yeah, it was a long time ago at this point, like two plus years ago at this point, which is insane. Watching you grow as a content creator has been an epic journey indeed. From part-time to full-time, accountant to certified YouTuber, your ability to continually push out great content while staying engaged with your audience is admirable. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. I'm not trying to blow smoke, but your work ethic is inspiring. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you, good sir. He also said thank you to me right after I said thank you. Look at that. Anyways, keep up the great work. I thoroughly enjoy watching your videos and even your recent side quests of taking up the Nuzlocke challenges have been a fun ride. I hope this collection brings you fortune and joy. May the high rarity goat gods bless your decks and may you bless others with some of these vintage classics. Catch you on the flip. P.S. Humor me. How's your journey as a full-time content creator going at Yugi Pro? Yugi Pro, not Yugi Pro. <laughs> what is your biggest takeaway thus far? What would be one nugget of wisdom you share with anyone inspired by you? Interesting. We might try and think of something to say during the collection opening. P.S.S. or P.P.S. I think it's P.S.S. I think. I'm not really sure. I included an array of goodies to make the video more interesting. Everything is now yours to do with as you wish. I did see these. I opened this up real quick to, to double check that it was, it was what I thought it was. And uh, yeah, there's some cool stuff in there. All right, let's go ahead and show some of the goodies so there's stuff like this dark magician girl the dragon knight sleeves i love getting sleeves like this because when i sell like tcg player and collections and stuff like that i love to have like double sleeve stuff so i sleeve with a nice sleeve and then i put a penny sleeve over it so it fits in a top loader nice and snug you know it's nice and protected so i love to have nice sleeves to do with that and uh there's some of them that's not all we also have the ash blossom sleeve the ash blossom deck box okay okay the dark magician's deck box so, like this is all kinds of nice accessories oh my goodness look how many sleeves there are this is is insane okay i love sleep so this is awesome he didn't even include this in like the price so this is all just free stuff he sent me so Thanks a lot, Michael. Oh, here's the Dark Magician sleeves that we missed. Very cool. And then the, oh, Dark Hex sleeves. These are really pretty, actually. Okay, I really like those. Okay. Plus, now I have so many decks that I actually use these sleeves for, like, real decks. So, I've turned into a duelist. Not that I'm a good one, though. All right. And then we have Structure Deck Spirit Charmer. So, this actually, I think, has a couple of stables in it. It's a bad Structure Deck, but it has Solemn Warning in it. A token, which is always nice. Dark Ruler No More is in here. That was what I was thinking of, I think. Spellbook of Knowledge, Rage oh, Regeki's in here. A lot of good staples in this deck. Not the best deck ever because of Spirit Charmers, but pretty solid staples in common. Then there's also a couple of binders. The Dark Magician, the Ash Blossom. And it looks like he got these all at the same time but we got all those binders he actually took all of the cards out of binders so we don't have to like shift through them and like awkwardly like pick up our camera and stuff this is gonna be great so much easier to go through and he also sent us some other accessories like card savers and team bags which is always great i'm always running out of those because you got to keep buying them over and over because when you sell a lot of stuff you use a lot of accessories you know what i'm saying and now we get to the cards which are two deck boxes this is the entire eight thousand dollar collect this is what i actually spent money on the rest of that stuff was free so thanks again for that by the way but this is it this is how you know this is like quality like quality over quantity two deck boxes he says open this one first and then the goods so i think it's all gonna be pretty good but let's just go with this one first let's do a little bit at a time so we have a makira the destructor db1 so you're like okay yeah pretty cool card but no big deal another one of those we got play set oh that's pretty four five five of those okay relinquish this is from dark legends this is the one i'm playing in my relinquish deck for goat i have two dark legends copies we've got a db1 look how much different these look this one's very bright and this one's very dark like the original starter deck pegasus one another db1 mass beast we've got buster blader goblin attack force swords of revealing light the dark hole exchange exchange okay these are for i forgot this was in db1 as a super i don't think i even knew that db1 would have been an awesome set if they had seeker rares man they really would have been awesome we got megamorph monster reborn super it's like barely a super dark legends has like no hollow foil which is kind of cool actually then the ultra rare from dark uh, dark beginning again so they reprinted it in the same rarity very weird change of heart also in the same rarity i don't really get those reprints imperial order maybe at the beginning they were like yeah let's just keep them all the same rarity and just like reprint them and i don't know it's kind of weird we got last warrior spear dragon total defense this is all like db1 db2 stuff okay fuchsia richie yamada dragon this is like a complete set almost for the foils obnoxious celtic guardian swift guy the fierce nine dark neck roof here a couple of those guardian sphinx a couple of those dark ruler hades you love to see it freed freed the creature swap book of life oh 
Might need this for when I put together my zombie goat deck, which I was playing the other day. That That's a fun deck, let me tell you. Danger Bigfoat. And speaking of goat, by the way, we played goat on Twitch the other day. So if you guys want to go check that out and potentially play some of that in the future, go check out my Twitch channel. We've been streaming every week daily. Get it? Because five days a week, not Saturday, Sunday. But every other day, it's been really fun. So go check it out. Danger Bigfoot. We got Exodia Legendary Fender. We're probably going to do a, a tournament at some point as well. That's going to be cool. Dark Greffer PTDN First Edition. We have low battery on our phone, of course. That is pretty nice, actually. Angel 07. This is from LODT. We got the... Uh, this is like a classic card for some reason. Where did this even come from? Why R01? What is that? I don't know what that is. Okay, next we have Ultimate Rare Garlandorf or Gandalf or Garlandorf or... Uh, yeah, you know, it's something. Ganondorf, you know. <laughs> it's all these different people mixed together. We've got a couple of those. Play set of those. That's a really nice artwork. I've always thought this was a little bit underrated. Trapple first edition from LOB. Catapult first edition. This is, by the way, the not good stuff. <laughs> first edition heavy storm. I actually need one in my original goat deck. I need a first edition heavy storm. So I guess this is probably going in there. Somehow I've never put one in there because they've always been too minty. I've wanted to grade them. Maybe this one would be the right one. First edition summon skull. I don't think all this is like near mint. A lot of it's like LP. I got to double check after the video, of course. I kind of want to check this one out. It looks really nice. This is not the good stuff. We have a not good stuff summon skull first edition. How's that possible? I think this was like LP when, when he said maybe not though I could be wrong. This it doesn't look LP. Okay. I see the back does have some scuffing. Yeah VLP is actually what he put I think he put like light play price on like the VLP stuff, which was very nice of him So very epic card right there I mean, that looks incredible. Like, if you want to summon skull for collect your collection as a rock card, this is a really good one because it's not like an attempt you to grade it because it's like going to be like a seven or an eight, but it looks amazing. It looks mint, you know? Then we got a spellbinding circle, thousand dragon, call the haunted man. These are such nice cards. Torrential, master strike, jar of greed, dark neck fear. By the way, a lot of this will be for sale. Some of it, like, you know, the heavy storm is going into my goat deck. I do have a few other things I'm going to be putting in decks, so those will be for sale, but feel free to ask. On the last time I said that in a collection, I had already sold everything, so sorry to everyone that asked and I had already sold it this will not be the case though because i'm out of town right now when you guys are seeing this dark ruler hades breaker the magical war Ooh, wonder if that's nice that's pretty good i think i need in my goat deck it has a slight crease so i would like to upgrade it guardian sphinx mystical knight of jackal we get the guardian sphinx the dark warrior dark not dark warrior dark mirror force spirit of the pharaoh ancient year gold here's one we got to check out this is a first edition ultimate rare so up top you guys can see it does have edge wear i think he had this one as lightly played like straight up lightly played this is a European print, by the way. Wow, that card looks good. I once rated one PSA 9. Okay, there's a little bit of a dent there. So, yeah, that there, there's that. Back is definitely pretty scuffed. So, it's not looking incredible on the back, but... Yeah, personally, I would have this at moderately played, but, you know, people assess conditions differently. So, you know, that's just how it goes. Very nice card, though. Then we've got a brain control. This is really cool. I, I actually think I need this for my Edison deck, so I'm probably going to end up keeping this one. It's not completely perfect. You can see there's a little bit of edge wear there. And then a Mass Dragon. I didn't know this had a hollow printing. This was actually exciting to me. I was like, whoa, this is sick. It's only like $25 because, like, I don't know any old school decks that really play Mass Dragon besides, like, you know, the Arm Dragon stuff, which is not that great. All right, so for not the good stuff, that was pretty good. Now we have the goods. All right, here we go. The goods is starting off with a common, I think. So... That's an interesting way to start off the goods. Okay, we got a dragon speed. Okay, here's skill drain. All right, nice. Skill drain, which now is an ulti printing, which we pulled the other day in the OTS video. Go check that video out. Awesome pulls. Scapegoat SDJ, very nice. Abyss Soldier is actually a pretty good card in like goat. With you pitch like freaking uh sinister serpent abyss soldier we got a dd assailant this is from dbt this is not the secret rare from what what was this it said dr4 crazy valuable on that one we got the pequeno moth the cocoon and the grande moth in the classic japanese uh, not rarity but language different but uh we've got the dark magician this used to be my profile picture for youtube and like twitter and everything so uh these are i really like these i really like the artwork i think it looks really good these are classic i think premium pack four right yep we got a play set of those. Now we have Upstar Goblins from Turbo Pack. Pretty cool, super rare. Book of Moon is this, Turbo Pack 7. Yeah, that's an ultra rare. A lot of printings of this card, but still really nice. Ba beautiful. I always want to say Bountiful. Is there a Bountiful card? I don't know. Beautiful Headhuntress. Soul of the Pure. We got a Morphing Jar. This is TB4. If this is TB2, we'd lose our minds, but TB4 is still pretty amazing, and we've actually pulled one of these before. Actually, twice. Once with Gezi, once on my channel. We got the Fiend Mega. Well, technically, both are on my channel, but one was not mine. The Fiend Mega Cyber. This is TB4. This is one I never got, actually. 
actually. So uh, that's pretty cool to get that. TP4, I thought it was later than that. Big Show Garna, we got the uh, DD Warrior. No, I did have this one, but it was damaged. DD Warrior, this is the ultra rare from Tournament Pack 7, which is nice. Slate Warrior, this is the one I never got. Slate Warrior, TP8, which is sick. Retro Pack 1, La Jin. I mean, Retro Pack's pretty cool. Retro Pack 1, Sangen. This is one I don't have either for GOAT format. I think it's the highest rarity, technically, or the most expensive card. Swords of Revealing Light, Retro Pack 1. This is really cool. It's actually a super rare, which is nice. Raigeki Retro Pack 1. These are cards you just don't see because Retro Pack 1, I mean, we've never opened it. Well, at least a full box. I would love to do that someday. If you have one, make sure to hit me up and don't ask $50,000. All right. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon from Retro Pack 1. Archfiend of Guilfer. We pulled one of these one time. Uh, Knight Assailant. Obviously a big card. And oh my goodness. Metamorphosis. Champion Pack. Book of Moon, Sakuretsu Armor. This is the full super rare set from Champion Back 1. We've got to check out this Metamorphosis. Let's see what condition it's in. It says near mint, so I think it was supposed to be near mint. Let's see. Front looks great. Back looks pretty good. Like, slight scuffing. That's it. So, yeah, I would definitely consider this near mint. It can have some slight scuffing on it and still be near mint. That's the point of near mint. It's not mint. It's near to mint. Uh, a lot of people don't really realize that when they buy near mint. They think near mint, highest rarity on TCG player. <laughs> Why do I keep saying rarity? Near mint, highest condition on TCG player. Yeah, got to be perfect. Nope, that's not how it works. They just don't sell mint because that would be toxic. It would just be really bad. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then there's a Book of Moon, which is also extremely expensive. I'll check that out afterwards. I think this one's VLP. And then Sakuretsu Armor. I think I could use another one of those for some Go decks. We'll see. We'll see. All right, and here's the Satellite Cannon. We never did pull this one because we pulled all the Supers twice, which was like incredible luck, actually, because this is by far cheaper. I do have a PSA 10 of this that I bought a while back. One of the last PSA 10s I bought, actually. Nimble Momonga. Very cool. We've got uh, one of those. Two, three, Magician of Faith. Woo, okay, Magician of Faith, super rare, near mint, near mint, and near mint. These cards are insanely expensive. Champion pack, by the way, is just like the higher rarity reprints. Very old, though. Very desired for GOAT format. Like, people want to use these really expensive cards. And uh, I don't, you know, it's kind of dangerous. I have a very expensive GOAT deck, but I don't actually use it. <laughs> we got a Smashing Ground. We got a Magical Stone Excavation. I think I have, a, I have a 10 of these now, right? I have a 9 and a 10. Spirit Reaper, also amazing. We got two of those, three of those play sets, man. This is insane. Magicians Unite, by the way, shout out to Revs for uh, cutting out how many flubs I've had in this video. It's been a lot. Magicians Unite, Giant Germ. You would never know, thanks to Revs. We got a <laughs> Magical Merchant. Oh, Wave Motion Cannon, which I always call Diffusion Wave Motion in the auction series. But this card is just insanely good. Trap Death Shoot, very expensive right now. Fiend Sanctuary, I don't even know if I have. I might have pulled that, actually. Old Vindictive Magician, I have one of those. Dark World Lightning, Blaze Accelerator. Did you guys know this card's like 200 dollars near mint now it's ridiculous it's so expensive rigorous reaver i remember this from the second set in duel links that's the only reason i know what this card is threatening war is a crazy good card we got three of those what is this in champion pack seven okay so that's a super rare yeah voltic king that's an ultra from champion pack seven dimensional fisher and a gravity behemoth oh my good yeah that was the whole collection that's a lot of heat at once that is a lot of heat i mean just 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 look at this champion pack cards galore so yeah, we're about to be out $8,000, but a lot of this will be for sale. So just go check out my Instagram at Ruxin34 if you guys want to hit me up about that. Possibly some will be on TCG, but with this kind of level stuff, it's probably going to be posted on Instagram because I want the collectors to be grabbing that stuff. Plus, we don't have that TCG player fee, so that helps. I forgot to answer his PS question, which was, how's the, how's the journey going right now? I would say the journey is going awesome since I went full-time on YouTube. I'm really loving it. I'm having so much fun doing like Twitch and like different channels and like going to events and meeting people. I guess that's where the pro Yu-Gi-Oh player comes comes in that in terms of the playability not going so well if you guys want to follow my journey doing that go check out uh rux and live because i do a discussion every time i go to a ycs i talk about how it went what i did what i messed up on which is always something because i'm getting destroyed every time <laughs> a nugget of wisdom for someone who inspired me i don't have a specific person but i guess other people on youtube who went full time and and went all in i was inspired to do that myself obviously because we did it but i would definitely be sure that you know you have a foundation before you do something like that but if you do have a solid foundation and like you know you have people watching you or you have like you know a way to make money that you want to do it. you don't have to be a youtuber you can just be like a seller like I, my friend sassiato is just an ebay seller but he's massive he sells so much stuff and like you can do that without having any sort of online presence in terms of videos and stuff like that so if you want to do something like that just go for it and just make it happen because really you're the only one who can make something like that happen you have to make the decision to quit you have to do all the work to like you know make your money and do all that stuff and uh just have a good time doing it 
I, I don't know if that's inspiring to anyone, but if it is, go ahead. Thanks a lot, Michael, for all the extra stuff you sent and the collection you sold to me. And of course, being a fan and uh, always supporting me. So thanks a lot. I'll see you guys next time. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. More epic content. Shout out to TCG Trust Cards, Stone Fall Show, Tomato Juice, Daxter, JT Cho, Clayton Fitzgerald, 87, Brett Palmer, Puffins Doom, Ernesto Deanda, Stanley Mimigecko, Ian Musa, Junior Barty, John Nolan, Anandatai Show, and Tom McLean. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.